It is the second longest running WWE pay-per-view event of all time, only behind WrestleMania. And needless to say, tomorrow night's 28th annual edition of the Survivor Series has never met more. Hello, friends. Ridiculously over Anthony Florio here with you here on the Tone 25. Um, great to be here as always, or I should say delighted to be here as always. And we are delighted to have you with us. Uh, apologies for the slight delay. Uh, waiting for uh, third, one of the uh, waiting for the we were supposed to have a, a three-man booth here, but Michael Bullock, uh, as usual, running late. You know, it is what it is when it comes to that. But hopefully, he'll be here by the time we uh, by the time we uh, wrap up here, or if not, we'll just get some quick takes on him during NFL Saturday, I guess. But. Fortune, it, it is. I'm gonna call. I'm, I'm, I thought about this all day, and I'm gonna call this. I'm calling this the Fortune Four's Super Saturday Night, and it is indeed a Super Saturday Night with the Fortune Four here. Although it's only a two-man panel right now, but we will have a three-man panel when it comes to the very end of this video. I'll explain in a moment. But right now, it is. It's me, ridiculously over Anthony Florio, along with the Cerebral Viper, Michael Fletcher here, and uh, we're gonna be joined. Um, Near the end of this video, we're going to have a very special guest joining us, uh, the Hardcore Pipe Bomb, the Grand, the grand Poobah himself, Derek Ferreira, is going to be joining us when we get to the main event because Derek Ferreira has some humongous breaking news that he wants to share with all of us. Uh, I don't know what that breaking news is, but I have a feeling uh, it is absolutely humongous, so we're going to... We're gonna uh, we're gonna bring him in. Uh, I said I would message him as soon as we get to the main event spot. Uh, I wanted to accommodate Michael Bullet, but you know these guys have uh, things to do here, so I don't want I don't want to keep them you know busy. I don't, don't want to keep them waiting. Uh, this guy's got work commitments as usual, and of course Derek Pereira has some, doesn't want to start the NFL show too too late. So so with that said, let's dive right in. Uh, of course. Uh, on the pre-show for Survivor Series, uh, we're not going to really get into this. I just want to, you know, explain to you all. Uh, Fandango is going to be making his uh, return from uh, quite a bit of a sabbatical, if you will. Uh, he's been laid off for a couple months, but they're hyping it as the new and improved Fandango. He's going to be back in the house tomorrow night, and he's got another new lady with him now. First he had Summer Rae, then he had Layla, and now he's going to have another Michael Fletcher favorite. Oh, Rosa. Oh, Rosa Mendez, indeed. Rosa Mendez is going to be Fandango's new valet, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes, against a mystery opponent. Now, we don't know if this is a dark enhancement talent that he's going up against, if it's a possible return of a superstar, or maybe even a possible debut. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but... That's on the kickoff show. We're not gonna do, we're not gonna really get into that because we don't know who it's gonna be. So that's really you know really nothing for us to uh, to worry about. So um, yeah. Um, so so with that said, uh, if if we talk about the main show here, I mean we're looking at only a five match card here, and uh, we break it down like this. Uh, Two, count them, two traditional Survivor Series elimination matchups, two championship matches, and one grudge match. That's, how I'm, that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it a grudge match. That's how it is. So, uh, But you could call it a grudge match. Others would like to call it a wrestling forum be a man fight. And that's exactly what that grudge match is going to be. So, uh, so there you go. So, so with that said, uh, Cerebral Viper... Let's dive right into this sucker. I mean, we're chomping at the bits here. We're ready to rock and roll. I mean, this is going to be one hell of an event. I mean, I cannot wait to see how... I cannot wait to get into this. I mean, this is definitely something we're look, we've been looking forward to. I mean, this Survivor Series event is always an event that we, you know, love. We, we, we just can't wait for this time of the year because, you know, Second longest run in pay-per-view behind WrestleMania, and um, 28th installment. It's going to be live tomorrow night from the Scott Trade Center, formerly the Keel Center, in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, boy, howdy, this is going to be one hell of an event. So, 
With that said, uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go how Derek Ferreira did it in his uh, sports blog. Uh, he did a sports blog on this yesterday, so uh, I'm trying to get it up here. I do apologize for the uh, little delay here. So, uh, but um, but here we go. Um, it's going to be um, the first match on this that we're going to get into. I definitely remember how he did it. How he did the first match. Uh, it's going to be the first of our two traditional Survivor Series elimination matchups. And uh, believe it or not, uh, it's going to involve the Divas. I mean, we're going to have ourselves a Divas traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup. And uh, it's going to be a four-on-four -four rarity. So here we go. Four-on-four -four traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup, Divas style. Now... I don't know. I don't know if they if they've you know designated a team captain for both sides, but I'm just gonna go out and say it like this: since Alicia Fox and Paige's names are mentioned first, I'm just gonna assume that since they've had the hot rivalry, I'm just gonna assume that they're the team captains. Although nothing is set in stone on that, but but nonetheless, on one side, you're gonna have Alicia Fox, Natalia, Naomi, and Emma. That's on one team. On the on the other side, or as the, or as the late great Gorilla Montoon would say, the opposition: Paige, Layla, Summer Rae, and Campbell. That's how it is. Four against four. Traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup. I'm going to start it off here. Um, second year in a row, we're getting a Divas traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup. I mean, of course, you remember uh, the very first Survivor Series in 1987, they had a, a traditional Survivor Series elimination match for the women. You know, it was Team Sherry Martell, Team, Team Sensational Sherry, God rest her soul, going up against Team Fabulous Moolah, again, another God rest her soul. Uh, you know, they had a five-on-five, five and, you know, the Jugger Bomb Angels came out of that as the winners. And then you have, you have to wait. Eight years before another traditional Survivor Series elimination match uh, with the women. That was in 1995. Team Alundra Blaze against Team Bertha Faye. And both, and both of their teams, their three partners in that four-on-four -four match, involved Japanese women's wrestlers. And I watched that back recently. And, you know, it was definitely one of, the, one, one of the better women's Survivor matches I've seen. Especially Aja Kong in that match. And then... You would have to wait 13 long years before the next one in 2008 in a Boston TD Garden. It was a five-on-five -five Divas Survivor match, and it was it was an it was a uh, an interpromotional match. It was Raw the Raw Divas against the SmackDown Divas, and it was Team Raw who won a Glamazon Beth Phoenix Soul Survivor, and then we would get it again the following year, 2009. Mickey James captain one team. Against uh, against Michelle McCool, who who captained the other side, and Team Mickey James won that thanks to two of Michael Fletcher's all-time favorites, if not his two all-time favorites, Mickey James and Melina Perez. Uh, I know he was very excited to see those two baby girls go over because those are his two favorites, and uh, me being a McCool guy, uh, but it, that but I, that was to be expected. And then last year, of course, was the last one. It was a seven on seven. If you remember, it was the cast of Total Divas going up against what they called the Team True Divas, Team Anti Divas, whatever you want to call it. And it was the Total Divas. It was Natalia and Nikki Bella who came out on top in that one. So, so here we are, 2014, and another Divas Survivor Series elimination matchup, and four against four. A little bit tough to call here. I mean, you look at the Alicia Fox team. I mean, Fox, Natalia, Naomi, and Emma. You got two former Divas champions in Alicia Fox and Natalia. You have a Diva who I honestly felt should have had a run as Divas champion already in Naomi. But, you know, injuries, what else is new? Injuries. It was, a, it was that vicious eye injury that she suffered at the hands of Oksana that really kept Naomi from being a Divas champion. And I think if it wasn't for that, she would have had a run at as a Divas champion. And then Emma, as as much as the gimmick is, you know, loopy and out there and a little bit of a campy comedy gimmick, 
who knows? Maybe she could be a future viewers champion herself. I mean, remember that match with Paige she had at the at that NXT show, which a lot of us are still raving about to this day. I mean, so good that many are calling it the diva match of the year. Although Charlotte and Natalia was just as amazing. And then look at the heel side. Again, two former champions, Paige and Layla. And Summer Rae, maybe, maybe a future Divas champion, I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see on that. And Cameron, well, you know, we, we all know that's the weak link right there. Everybody knows that. And I honestly thought going in it was going to be a five-on-five. Five. I thought maybe Rosa was going to round out the face side and maybe even Eva Marie was going to round out the heel side. But I don't think that's going to happen. There could still be a five-on-five five if they decide to, you know, surprise us with a couple of new entrants. Maybe skip, maybe a, some possible call-ups from NXT, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be a four-on-four four here, and it's tough to call. It really, really is. I mean, it can go either way. It really can. I mean, that's, that, but that's the beauty of these matches. But at the end of the day, um, thinking about it, Paige is the hottest thing in the Divas division right now. And I say that the Paige team wins, and I'm going to say that Paige is going to be the sole survivor. That's how I feel about it. So uh, I think it's going to be your typical ho hum diva fight. Uh, I, I can honestly say this is what this is most likely going to be, considering the, the body work of the rest of the card. I hate to say it, but this is probably going to most likely be the worst fight of the night, if I'm being quite honest with you. Uh, probably going to be a lot of random eliminations, I'm sure. I'll be surprised if this thing gets at least five minutes, maybe even ten, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So, with that said, I'm going with Team Page, and I'm going to go with Page as the sole survivor. So, my story, I'm sticking to it. But with that said, Cerebral Viper, Michael Fletcher, your thoughts on this Divas traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup? You know, this is going to be a very interesting match, to say the very least. You know, it's you know, it's well surprised, a, a nice welcome to have the Survivor Series. Uh, Divas fight in in the card as well, and you know we were always barking. Well, I know Anthony was always barking about why is there not enough uh, Survivor Series elimination matches in in on this card, and I think this time around they actually did. You know they gave us two this time, which is actually pretty good. Um, and I I like how the how this one stacked up. You know I kind of feel like the face team actually has more of an advantage, Anthony. You know because when you have Alicia Fox. You have Natalia, you have Naomi, and uh, you have Emma. And let me tell you guys, Emma is very underrated, uh, especially in WWE. Like, because if you see her on NXT, she is a lot better in NXT than she is in WWE. So, I mean, I kind of feel like, yeah, they did make her a campy comedy, uh, a goofy character, especially with Santino Morella. I mean, that was kind of a little bit of a... It was nice. It was sweet. It was pretty funny. But she's a damn good wrestler, man. And if she really... If they really would have stopped restricting her and let it, and let her use her true talent, she could far and away be the Dark Horse as one of the best wrestling divas in WWE. I mean, the battle she had, especially with Paige... I mean, it may, you know that that's going to be a great thing to see. Um, and then, of course, yes, I think, uh, especially with the other side, of course, Layla, former Divas champion, Paige is probably the best out of, out of everybody who's in that fight. She's far and away probably the best Diva on the entire Divas roster. So, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I can't disagree with that at all. Summer Rae and, and Cameron... Ah, I mean, yeah, good, not great. I, I, I kind of wish that maybe they could have gone a different route with that, but you know, there's not that many divas in the division anyway, so some people had to play on that one. So whatever the case may be, it is what it is on that one. I'm gonna disagree with you, Anthony, because I feel like I have to say that I believe Alicia Fox's team is gonna win. But here's the thing: I think there's gonna be multiple survivors. On this one for for that team, so I'm gonna say Team Alicia Fox will win it, but I'm gonna say Naomi and Natalia will be your sole survivors for this fight. I think they're far and away the best. 
I think it's going to be one of those really down to the wire where I could see where maybe unless Tyson Kidd uh, sticks his nose where it doesn't belong and costs Natalia uh, to be eliminated, I think Natalia will get will be one of them one of them at the end. And Naomi, I just think her skills are so good now that. I think they're going to really want to push her in the near future, especially after some of the news that uh, I need to talk about, especially when we get into the Divas Championship fight later later on in the show. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to go with it. Team Alicia Fox wins it with Naomi and Natalia as survivors of that match. So with that said, Anthony, let's move on. All right, and we're going to move on to our next match here. I, I managed to find that Derek block, so I've got it right here. So I'm just going to go by how he did it, and he led up with the Diva fight, so I did the right thing there. So next match we're going to get into, it's going to be a fatal four-way match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Reigning champions, the Dust Brothers, Goldust and Stardust, they're going to be defending the titles against three different challengers. They're going to be defending them against the Usos, Los Matadores, and The Miz and Damian Mizdow. Michael Fletcher, your thoughts on this Fatal 4-Way for the tag titles? This is going to be very interesting to see because, remember, Fatal 4-Ways are so unpredictable to predict in these type of situations, and especially because it is one fall to a finish. Um, basically, the first pin or submission, you win the be- you not only win the fight, you win the belts. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of craziness, a lot of hot tags are going to be going on in this fight. You know, interchangeable parts, to say the very least. Um, You know, the smart money would say that, you know, the smart money would say either uh, Stardust and Goldust walks out of here with the belt or the Usos are going to win the titles. And something tells me that I think we're going to see something out of right field. I don't know why. I just got this weird feeling that, you know, with everything that's been going on lately, with especially with the the way the fans are reacting, and I know a lot of people are saying, oh, I think I think Miz Dow's going to, you know, Miz Dow and, and the Miz are going to have an implosion soon. I don't think it's going to happen just yet. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an implosion just yet. And I'm really going to go out on a limb here. And I'm actually going to do something probably borderline crazy here. I am actually going to say that Miz Dow and The Miz are going to win the WWE Tag Team Championship. I think they are going to be crowned the new WWE Tag Team Champions tomorrow night. Um, the reasoning behind it is I think it's going to be a crazy finish. I think it's going to be some kind of chicanery type finish. I could even see where Miz Dow might pull that twin magic, which I know Florio's But I think we're going to see some kind of twin magic where the Miz and Miz Dow plays a little, a little kookiness, uh, to say the very least. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think they're going to steal the Tag Team Championship uh, from the Usos. I think they're going to pin one of the Usos and uh, send them into an Uso crazy stir. But, you know, at the end of the day, I understand probably not the smartest pick and probably, like I said, right out, out, somewhere out of right field. But something tells me that this is not going to be your typical fatal four-way type of championship fight. And I think there's going to be a, a screwy little finish but I do believe we will have new tag team champions when this is all said and done. I'm, I'm really going out on a limb here. So I think Miz Dow and The Miz wins the titles. Anthony, it's yours. Yeah, you you certainly are going out on a limb on that one. But um, but anyways, um, yeah, um, it should be a good matchup here. I can honestly say this will probably be the third best fight of the night, if I'm being quite honest here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being the opener. I could see this match actually starting the pay-per-view off, if I'm being quite honest. Because, you know, you definitely want to get a hot a hot crowd to start it off. And I can't think of a better way to start it off than a fatal four-way matchup here. I do believe this is of the one-fall variety. I don't think this is going to be an elimination-style matchup. So it should be a very good matchup because you got the high-flying ability of the Usos. 
and you also have uh, the high flying abilities of Los Matadores as well. I mean, yes, there can't be comedy tag team. Everybody knows that. But Primo and Epico, they can back it up. Everybody knows that. And of course, uh, Miz and Mizdow, I mean, I know they're getting over right now. I mean, Mizdow especially. But um, Derek Forever thinks there's a possibility that uh, that Miz will actually, that Mizdow will actually turn on Miz and start a babyface run because of the crowd reactions that he's been getting. And I could see that, if I'm being quite honest. I, I don't really see Miz and Miz now winning the tag team titles. I mean, there's there's definitely a chance that it could happen. There There is always a chance. As we all know, anything anything can happen in, uh, in the WWE. Everybody knows that McMahon, you know, praised that about 20 years ago. We all know that. And then, of course, uh, Matador is that there can't be comedy tag team. I mean, I had some rumblings. I, I got some rumblings in my gut about how possibly they could be the tag champions because of, you know, they, they were going, they, they had gotten victories over the Dust Brothers in recent weeks on, on TV. But I'm not really sure about that now. And then, of course, the Usos coming off a 202-day run as tag team champions, winning the titles back in March of this year, and then losing them. And, you know, they won it on that Monday Night Raw in Chicago, March the 3rd, and then they lose from the, against the, the great New Age Outlaws. And then you and then they lost the titles until not until the night of champions uh, when they lost to the Dust Brothers. So again, tough to call. Any one of these four can win it. But if I'm being honest with you, I got to go with the Dust Brothers here. I think the Dust Brothers are definitely you know the hot team right now, and you always got to go with the hot hands. So I'm going to take a chance here. I'm going to go with the Dust Brothers to successfully defend the WWE Tag Team Championship in this four-way matchup, which I think you're here first. I think this is going to start the pay-per-view. That's just my thought. So so with that said, um, we're going to move on to our next matchup here, and uh, it's going to be our second Divas matchup of the night. This is going to be for the WWE Divas Championship. It's going to be champion AJ Lee defending the title against Nikki Bella. Yes, uh, Nikki Bella, of course, uh, winning a Divas Halloween costume battle on the Halloween episode of SmackDown to earn this number one contender spot. And of course, we all know uh, last month at Hell in a Cell, she defeated Sister Brie Bella in a match where the loser had to be the winner's assistant for 30 days. And um, thankfully, this hasn't been you know shoved down our throats as much as we were thinking it was going to be. I mean, I'm glad they've kept this at a minimum. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but I honestly thought it was going to be, you know, it was going to drag and drag and drag and drag on. But thankfully, this, it didn't get to the point of, ugh, go away. But, you know, this has been good. And you know Bree's going to be involved in, some, in one way or another. Now, this past week on TVs, I mean, on Monday Night Raw, Brie Bella dressed up as AJ Lee, obviously by order of Nikki Bella. And then... Uh, he went up against AJ Lee, as I recall, in a matchup. And then, if you didn't see SmackDown last night, AJ Lee dressed up as Nikki Bell. I mean, yeah, we, we've seen we've seen this kind of stuff before. I mean, remember when Mickey James dressed up like Trish Stratus, and remember when Trish Stratus dressed up as Mickey James back during their epic rivalry from about a decade ago? Yeah, we all remember that. It was kind of like that all over again. Now, there have been rumblings, and there's been a lot of stuff on the dirt sheets that this could be AJ Lee's last night with the WWE. This could be this could be the end of the AJ Lee era. Because, you know, she's just recently started her own little website there. Of course, we all know she's married to CM Punk. And, of course, you know, the CM Punk chant, you know there's going to be a lot of those. I mean... Where AJ Lee goes, the CM Punk chants follow. Everyone knows that. And oof. it's going to be. At, and Derek, and Derek on, the, on his blog said that he thinks this will be the better of the two Diva fights. I'm inclined to agree. Because remember, we thought the Bella match was going to be terrible. But they surprised the hell out of us. And they gave us the sleeper Diva fight of the year. The Diva sleeper fight of the year, right here. It ended up being a solid two to two and a half star match. 
that's how good it was. Because the match was very good, you know, there was some great action and there was some good near falls in there and Ugh. But if age but you know, I, I got into detail on this wrestling forum Monday night. I said that if age but that if AJ left, it was gonna be yet another talented wrestling diva who was gonna be leaving them. I mean this whole thing started when Trish and Lita both retired in 2006. And then all these other great talented divas left. You know, Victoria left for TNA. Uh, Michelle McCool left to have a family with The Undertaker, her husband. And then Beth Phoenix left because of some contract issues. Now she's, 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 now she's had, she has a family with Edge. Her and Edge are, are an item, and they have a kid. So there goes Beth Phoenix, another great diva. Mickey James left. But... She left on bad terms. There was some knocking diva issues during, you know, right around uh, the latter part of 2010. And, you know, I could go on and on. And AJ Lee goes, that's another talented diva that they like get away. I mean, the only real talented divas you have are, nowadays, are Natalia, Naomi, Age, and Emma, even with her campy comedy gimmick. All the others, I hate to say, are, are pretty much eye candy at this point. So, but I have, but there's been rumblings about NXT call-ups like Charlotte and Sasha Banks. But Charlotte is the is the the high the high one on the totem pole right now. So, this is a tough one to call for me because I want to go with AJ Lee. I want to say AJ Lee is going to successfully defend here. I really do. But, uh so damn tough to call, but at the end of this, thinking about it, but then again, remember, remember this. We all thought AJ. I mean, there were dirt sheets going around saying that AJ Lee was pregnant. Yeah, how did that work out? Did she look pregnant to you? No, not to me, not to Fletch, not to Derek, not to Michael Bullock. She looks fine to me. So if, if they got that wrong. I'm just going to say like this. Read into it what you will, or as Derek would like to say, take it with a grain of salt. But at the end of the day, until I see something that indicates that it's going to be AJ's last night, and I haven't seen it yet, I'm going to take a chance here, and I'm going to go with AJ Lee to successfully defend the Divas Championship in this matchup. And then from there, we'll wait and see what happens. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at the end of that match. But I'm taking a chance here. The dirt sheets have been wrong before. They said, remember, they said AJ Lee was pregnant. He's not. So what makes you think that this really is the end of the road? Here? So with that said, I'm going with AJ Lee to successfully defend the Divas title. Michael Fletcher, your thoughts on this one? All right. There's a number of ways this can go. Number one, yes. Um, AJ Lee, you know, it's more than just a lot of rumors that's going around about her possibly leaving WWE because of the fact that she wants to start a family uh, of her own. And yeah, there was rumors about her being pregnant and this and that. And, you know, for the first time she left after, you know, she lost the Divas title that she came back to, to regain it. And, you know, and even at that time, um, you know, she was getting ready to get married, you know, there was rumors that she was pregnant, and this and that. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, I mean, there's a lot of things that can go down in this fight that I truly believe um, can happen. Yes, AJ Lee could win this, no doubt about it. But I also heard a theory about that Bree makes a mistake makes a humongous screw up and actually and accidentally helps her sister win the title tomorrow night and take the Divas Championship off AJ Lee and that might be where we might see the last of AJ Lee for a while but who knows I mean there's a there's a number of scenarios how this could play out I don't think we have a clear cut picture of it I think we'll once we see how the fight transpires during the show then we'll probably get a good sense or a good feel for it and say one way or another okay it could go like this it could go like that and then we can assume or predict 
But at this point in the game, at this juncture, I think we can't say anything about it. So therefore, just by default and just on mere blindness I'm going with, I have to say AJ Lee wins it. She keeps the title. But would I be stunned if we have a new champion? Absolutely not. I would not be shocked if if Nikki does win the belt uh, because of the fact that, you know, with everything that happened in the past, I just feel like this would be the moment and whatnot. Now, there is a scenario that I think of that's possible. There's two scenarios. Scenario number one, AJ Lee keeps the belt, Charlotte shows up, and who knows, maybe Charlotte's the one to dethrone AJ Lee and become the Divas champion. And now be goodbye, and then now be the one where AJ leaves. Or number two is that Nikki wins the belt, Brie goes after Nikki, and Brie, on the back of the Yes movement, wins the Divas Championship. And she becomes the Divas champion. And, you know, that would be like that heartwarming story. Just like when uh, Daniel Bryan won his title at WrestleMania. You know, because she is now, well, I would say it like this. She's the queen of the Yes movement. So, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I could see something like that. You know, keep the Yes movement alive. Keep the momentum on the side. And then hope and pray that Daniel Bryan does come back and rumors are swirling about his possible return, possibly as soon as WrestleMania. And if that's true, that's a definite shot in the in the arm for the WWE more than anything else. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's just move on, Anthony. All right. Uh, we're going to move on indeed. And we're going to move on to our grudge match, our be a man fight, if you will, here on this Survivor Series preview show. This is definitely one of the two major matches we're waiting for. The Lunatic Friends, Dean Ambrose, one on one with Bray Wyatt. Michael Fletcher, you get to lead off on this one, man. What do you oh think? man, what a fight this is going to be, Anthony. I mean, this is this is the one I think the whole world's been waiting for. You know, when we saw it happen last month at the Hell in a Cell. We all were kind of flabbergasted, but then we all were thinking, oh my God, Ambrose and Wyatt, this is going to be freaking awesome. And they've delivered. And then some, you know, the promos that they've been doing, the mind games that these guys have been playing. I mean, this is this is why everybody's getting so jacked up for this fight more than anything else in this world. And, and I am very apprehensive and very... I'm optimistic about this fight, and if this is, I hope this goes down the right way, because if this does, holy crap, uh, is what I'm going to say. Um, as far as predicting a winner, i got to go Bray Wyatt. I'm sorry. I think right now, I think this is not going to be the end of the rivalry, so I'm going to give Wyatt the advantage. I think Wyatt will win this one, either by hook or by crook. I think he'll either backdoor his way to the victory, or maybe there's a surprise. Maybe there might be two new members coming to join in following the buzzards, as they would say. We'll wait and see what happens there. And you know what I'm talking about when I said two new members. Um, so I think there might be two new guys who might be wanting some guidance, wanting some help uh, from Bray Wyatt. But we'll wait and see what happens there. And I truly believe that this is not going to be the last time we're going to see these two uh, go at it. I actually think they could go and fight one more time uh, in December for uh, TLC on the next pay-per-view after that. So I just think that this time around, Bray Wyatt gets the advantage. I think he wins the match. And I do not think this is going to be a blow-off at all. I think this is just going to be another log in the fire, as we would say. Uh -huh. So with that said, Bray Wyatt wins. Anthony, it's yours. Yes, uh, Derek Ferreira hinted at this uh, on his preview blog that he did last night on the sports blog website. Um, 
and yeah, you I, I you pretty much made all my points for me last on this one. I mean, I think this is. But I think what you forgot to leave out was this is going to be the second best fight of the night. If I'm being quite honest with you, I mean, this is going to be a very good matchup here. I mean, there's been some very good segments. I mean, we all saw that Dean Ambrose survival kit from last night. We all saw that. And of course, they had a great promo segment, you know, sometime before that. And yeah, this is going to be what we like to call a wrestling forum, be a man fight. I mean, this is going to be physical. It's going to be smash mouth. Everything that you that you love to see in a in a match. And this ain't going to be no five star technical classic. This ain't, this ain't going to be no five star Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat classic. No, it's not. This is going to be a straight up fight. That's all there is to say about it. I mean. And I do agree with you. I think Bray Wyatt does go over here. And who are those new members? Well, a certain tag team from NXT who dominated the tag team division, who held their tag team titles for a very long time, as I as I recall. A couple of guys that go by the name of The Ascension. Anyone? The Ascension? That's who Derek Ferreira thinks is going to be coming in to, to join to join up with Bray Wyatt and to call and to form what what Derek is calling the Wyatt Family 2.0. I mean, if the Ascensions show up, I mean, my goodness, wow. I mean, to have them with Bray Wyatt as the new Wyatt Family, that would be pretty impressive, man. I mean, any way to get the Ascension on the main roster, I'm all for it. Because if you haven't seen these guys, they are amazing. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see them in a tag team scene anytime soon. And who knows? Maybe this team could definitely be a major factor in the tag team title picture within the next year. So, so with that said, I'm going to agree with Fletch on this one. I'm going to go with Bray Wyatt to win it. Maybe the, I think it's because of the Ascension. I think the Ascension is going to get involved. I think Ambrose is going to be on the verge of winning the match. But then the lights will go out, and then you'll see the Ascension, and you'll uh, they'll take out and they'll take out uh, Dean Ambrose, maybe allow Wyatt to set up for the sister Abigail, get the win, and then it will set up a, some kind of a gimmick match at TLC next month in Cleveland. I'm thinking possibly either a tables match or a chairs match, because it's not. I don't think it's going to be the tables, ladders, and chairs match itself. I'll have some thoughts on that in just a moment. But um, but yeah, here we go. Um, I'm going with I'm going with Bray Wyatt to win. So. Special guest joining us now. Uh, you may know him as the uh, as the host of the Wrestling Forum, the Hardcore Pipe Bomb himself, our Imperial Grand Poobah himself, Derek Ferreira. He wanted to join us for uh, for what we're about to get into right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is the main event of the night: traditional Survivor Series elimination matchup. Team John Cena versus Team Authority. Team John Cena consists of Team Captain John Cena along with Dolph Ziggler, The Big Show, Ryback, and Eric Rowan going up against Team Authority, captained by Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins. His team members consist of the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, Rusev, formerly of the Wyatt family, Luke Harper, and, and then, uh, oh, my goodness, I mean, Rollins, along with uh, Mark Henry and Rusev and uh, Luke Harper. I, I do uh, – oh, and Corporate Kane. Can't forget about Corporate Kane or, or Citizen Kane, as we like to call him. So um, I don't know if Derek wants to lead off on this uh, because I know Derek has some big news. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, I, I had a feeling you would. So with that said, uh, I'm just going to throw it up to Derek Ferrer because he has some major news that he wants to share with all of us. So. All right, all right, all right, all right, Derek. Let's have it. All right. Um, well, first of all, we always say, how are you going to follow that? Well, let me just say it like this. You guys ain't going to follow what um, scoops that I found on the Internet on the last couple of hours. So I um, want to talk about this match because um, I did talk about this on the sports vlog. This fight right here, I'm calling it um, – the winner take all 2.0 because it has winner take all all over it. I mean, from the first one, I think about it, and that was something that I talked about on the blog. Uh, I believe it was last week, and 
I did a reflection blog. 2001, why that wouldn't take all match, to me, was the greatest Survivor Series match of all time. Putting it on social media, some people agreed, and some people disagreed. Some people, believe it or not, had that Team Raw, Team SmackDown, and then, of course, the other one was the um, the Survivor Series fight with Team DX. I think that was in 2003. Um, but when you talk about this match, you have what I think is going to be 45 to 50 minutes of a Survivor Series rules matchup. And when you have that match as a long Survivor Series rules match, there's one thing. It's going to be a five-star classic. It's going to have a whole bunch of Shakespearean drama, as we always like to say. And there's going to be, believe it or not, um, as the dirt sheets say, three surprises that's going to happen tomorrow night at this pay-per-view. Um, this surprise really, it's not really a surprise to be quite honest. Um, but there was news today, and I'm going to try to go on the website that Anthony Florio um always goes on, the wrestlingnews.co. Um, Randy Orton, yes. Randy Orton is going to be in St. Louis. Um, he's already in St. Louis, Missouri, as we speak. Um, we know that he's filming the Contempt 2. Um, but there was something that really came out of that um, dirt sheet. And I'm going to try to pull off the picture here. So here we go. Um, just want to show this to the viewers, the typical uh, WWE viewer who's watching us tonight here on YouTube. I don't know if you can see this. This was a boarding pass um, from American Airlines. And you can see from Albuquerque, New Mexico, where they're filming that movie. And it's going to Dallas Fourth Work. After doing some investigative reporting, I actually found out that that was a connected flight that was going to St. Louis. Now, Dave Metzler, who loves, of course, to um, you know, be really the big spoiler in the room, as I like to say, um, he reported that, you know what, just take it with a grain of salt. He's in St. Louis to visit his father, of course, maybe for the Thanksgiving holiday. The Thanksgiving is this week here in the United States. Uh, for some of our international viewers. But if Randy Orton's going to be in St. Louis, where Survivor uh, So that's one rumor. This rumor I actually pulled off uh, before we went on the air tonight. There's a rumor going around that there might be a third surprise. This surprise... Roman Reigns, as early as tomorrow night, could come back to the WWE. Now, this news report that came out, um, they mentioned Santino Morella. But Santino Morella, he's going to be on Raw Monday night because it's one of the reasons why they got Larry the Cable Guy as the guest host. Because they're going to um, promote the Jingle All the Way movie, the second installment of that franchise. And Santino and Larry the Cable Guy are in it. Now, Roman Reigns, as you all know, is in Reno, Nevada for a Comic-Con convention. And he's there for the whole weekend. I would take that with a pinch of salt. But if WWE is promoting Roman Reigns, and they're going to have him fight at the TLC pay-per-view, according to this particular dirt sheet, you know he's going to be there tomorrow night. Now... I want to save the best rumor for last because I want to get back to this matchup. Everyone wants to know what's going to happen because I said in my blog, I originally had the authority winning this match. Why? Because Sheamus was going to turn on Team Cena. Well, that's not going to be the case. If you saw what happened on one of the dirt sheets, and I saw this through Bleacher Report, Sheamus had surgery on Thursday. And part of the reason why they wrote him off the storyline or wrote him out the match 
was because he had some injury concerns. And that's why they took him out. Now, when it goes into this Survivor Series rules matchup, Rusev, you know he's going to be booked strongly. So, I'm going to be surprised. I don't think he's going to get pinned in that match. I think he's going to get disqualified. It's going to protect his book in. You kind of think, as it comes to the end of the match, the one thing you got to be concerned about the authority winning is if somebody gets involved. Triple H, you know he is going to get involved. And this is where the big surprise comes into play. Here he goes. This was reported last night on numerous wrestling websites that Sting is going to be in St. Louis tomorrow night. They're going to debut Sting tomorrow night. And part of the reason why they're going to want to do it is because they want to generate more subscribers to the WWE Network. Because we all know WWE Network for the new subscribers is free for November. So they want you to keep the network. They want you to say, hey, WWE Network, if you want to get big surprises, this is... We're marketing it as a product that will give you big surprises. Now, there's a lot of things going on going around with Sting lately. WWE 2K15 has been a success, according to the Video Game Insiders. They just came out with a DVD. Um, I'll be honest with you. That DVD was just totally bad. I saw it through various methods. And... Another way that you want to have Sting debut tomorrow night, he's going to be your headliner for the Hall of Fame this year. He's already been rumored to be in the Hall of Fame, along with Macho Man Randy Savage, who had his uh, DVD released, by the way, this past week. Oh, by the way, that DVD, that was one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in WWE, uh, by any WWE home video. Definitely recommend it. I definitely recommend it. So, as far as Sting goes, what could they possibly do with him? I think they could make him an authority figure. Maybe the new general manager of Raw SmackDown. Keep him on TV. And then at WrestleMania, because I know the talk about WrestleMania is to have Triple H and The Rock go at it. Um, if you want to do that fight... That's the fight everyone wants to see because, because of the nostalgic factor. Because that's the match that everyone wants to see one-on-one -on -one at a WrestleMania. Should have happened at WrestleMania 16, to be quite honest. But they went with the Fatal 4-Way match. I respect that decision. But that should have been a singles match at WrestleMania 16. But really the concern is the younger viewers. They don't know about The Rock. They don't know about the Triple H. They don't know about that rivalry from the Attitude Era. But if you want to put Sting, which, oh, by the way, it, it would make a great Power Struggle storyline because that's what WWE wants to do is the great storyline of Power Struggle. We've heard of rumblings about Vince McMahon and Triple H being in that storyline. That's where the rock factors in. But you have Sting, he could factor into that storyline. So I can see Sting get involved. Some way, somehow, you know he'll be in St. Louis tomorrow night. Um, we won't be seeing um, any Sting memes on the meme gene tomorrow night. Whether it's, you know, that wait in for Sting character or, you know, that skeleton from the Halloween episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Just sitting there waiting for Sting to debut in the WWE. Uh, those are some funny movies. Uh, but as far as the Soul Survivor goes for that match, and I did not put that on blog on sports blog. John Cena is one of them because now they got this new stipulation that they put in on SmackDown last night that if the Authority wins, all Team Cena members are fired except for John Cena. John Cena. you got to keep Cena 
his momentum is going to be strong. And you know he's going up against Brock Lesnar. There's been some rumors that fight could happen at TLC. Take that with a grain of salt, as I always like to say. But I also heard that he could get involved in a TLC match with Seth Rollins and Randy Orton. That was another rumor that I read about on the dirt sheets as well. Ryback obviously has to be one of the survivors. You want to make him look strong. That's what they've been doing on TV as of late. But that one concern is he goes from a babyface to a heel tomorrow night and joins the authority. But I really doubt that's going to happen. So Team Cena wins this match. Um, expect a lot of Shakespearean drama and expect those surprises to show up in St. Louis tomorrow. And like I said, with the Sting rumor, it's all about trying to get network subscribers to the WWE Network. Because they have 700,000 subscribers, over 700,000. You want to get the million subscriber break by the end of the year if you want to make that into a success. Um, and then there was another rumor that, you know, there's, possi there's a possibility that Stephanie McMahon is expecting a child. Um, that kind of caught my attention on social media. So take that with a grain of salt. Michael Bullock will be happy tomorrow night if that result does stand because the authority will die tomorrow night. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. So, give me Team Seal to win this match. It's going to be a five-star classic. Can't wait to see it. That's the match that I have the most vested interest in right now. Um, if you told me 48 hours ago um, about that Survivor Series match, if I was going to watch it live, I would have said no on that. But, now with all these rumors coming in, I I want to watch this fight live more than any other wrestling fan. So I'm praying WWE Network, their servers, don't go down during that match tomorrow night. So Team Cena wins. Florio, it's yours. Wow. Now how in the world are you going to follow that? I don't know. But, you know, we're going to have to try our best here. Um, so Derek has Team Cena winning. Um, I'm assuming that John, you have John Cena and Ryback as your survivors, Derek. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I just want to be crystal clear on that. Um, but anyways, okay, yeah, he's got John Cena and Ryback as the uh, as the winners. So, um, oh man, I mean, first time since 2005 that a traditional Survivor Series elimination match is going to be the main event of a Survivor Series pay per view. About damn time. I mean, every year since 2006, it's been some form of a world championship match. I mean, 2007, we had Hell in a Cell for the world heavyweight title, Batista and The Undertaker. 2008, another world title match. It was Chris Jericho against the returning John Cena. 2009, a triple threat match for the WWE title, Cena, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, which was awesome, by the way. Watched that back the other night. 2010, you had Randy Orton against Wade Barrett, WWE title, free or fired for John Cena as the referee. And then, of course, 2011 was the only year that we did not have a world title match as the main event. And you had a tag team grudge match with uh, The Rock and John Cena against The Miz and r Truth. And in 2012, you had CM Punk against John Cena and Ryback, triple threat for the title. And then last year, well, one of the worst Survivor Series main events of all time, if not the worst Survivor Series main event of all time, with Randy Orton and the Big Show for the WWE Championship. Traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Team Raw and Team SmackDown was the last to headline it, 2005 in Detroit. Ugh. And Derek Ferreira is absolutely right. He is absolutely spot on. I mean, that 2001 Survivor Series elimination match, Team WWF against Team Alliance, winner take all, to this day, that is still the greatest traditional Survivor Series match of all time. The only one that was ever that I've ever rated a five star classic. Although there have been some that came close, that Raw SmackDown match, the Team Bischoff and Team Austin match in 2003, those were the only two that gave it a run. The other ones have been good, but not overly great over the years. But they are finally utilizing this concept. This is what what made the event famous in the first place. This is what what made this event my favorite pay-per-view event other than WrestleMania. 
because of these matches. I love how these matches have gone down. I've been watching back all these classic Survivor Series for the last month, and I've been having a lot of fun going down memory lane and reliving all these great, great matchups. And this one right here, if booked correctly, and if given the proper amount of time, because remember, this is only a five-match card. This match could easily get the 45 minutes that the winner-take-all match got in 2001, if not more than that. I mean, this is going to be, this is going to be, this could possibly surpass winner-take-all as the greatest traditional Survivor Series elimination match of all time. Team Authority loses, they're out of power. Team Cena loses, they're fired. So, you have, it's meaningful. It means something. And that's exactly what this event needs. I read a great editorial from Richard Gray of WrestlingNewsWorld.com, and, and he feels that this event is, you know, a, is a big deal. He feels that this event is an event that, you know, that WWE really needs to hit a home run on because he has been very critical of the product for the last couple of months. And he feels that if they're going to entice network subscribers that and you gave this event away for free to brand new network subscribers only, us longtime subscribers like myself and Derek and Fletch and Michael Bullock, who who have continued to pay, you know, the nine ninety nine. I mean, you have. I mean, everybody. Uh, there, there have been concerns about dirty finishes, about how there could be a, a cop out finish, how there could be a, a a shenanigan finish here. He doesn't feel that way. He feels that there's yeah or right. Yes, we feel that. This event is going to deliver. And this match here, I feel, is going to deliver. We saw it earlier this year at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 30. We didn't know what to expect going in. But after we saw that show, after we all saw that show, we were so impressed with how great that event was. It made history. It did the unthinkable. We thought no WrestleMania was going to surpass WrestleMania 17 as the greatest of all time. It happened. This year it happened. WrestleMania 30. The new greatest WrestleMania of all time. And the first pay-per-view in the history of this show, the Wrestling Forum, to ever garner the coveted Perfect 10 rating. That's how great it was, folks. If you haven't seen it, what the heck, where the hell have you been these last seven, almost eight months? Go out of your way to see this event. Not just because of Daniel Bryan finally getting his moment in the sun. Not just because of the Undertaker's streak at ending, which we never thought would happen, but just the overall body of work of that event from top to bottom. Enough said. This Survivor Series right here, this traditional match, is going to be possibly the greatest one of all time. Could th- I think this match, if all goes well, could surpass winner take all as the greatest traditional Survivor Series elimination match of all time. Look at the names involved. Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler, his body of work speaks for itself. Seth Rollins, future of the company, future world champion, in my opinion. He's going to be, a, he's going to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion sometime next year. I'm thinking sometime after WrestleMania. Maybe even sometime next summer, as early as that. Of course, Cena, that speaks for itself. Of course, you got the veteran of Kane. And then you've got Rowan and Harper. That's gonna that just added to, that just made it interesting. Ryback, who's back in the main event scene. They obviously had faith in him again. You know, he had some noggin diva issues, but he's back in the fold now as a serious main event player. And then the big show, another veteran. I mean, you got so many great names here. And remember, Big Show was in that traditional Survivor Series match of winner take all. So was Kane. They were on the same team. They were on Team WWF in that match. I mean but Derek Ferrer is also right about this. He talked about those dirt sheets. I read those dirt sheets too, man. I read those same ones about how Sting's going to show up. Roman Reigns, that's news to me, if I'm being honest with you. I did, I, I did not even know that Roman Reigns was going to possibly be there. And then on top of that, you throw in Randy Orton. Well, that's been rumored. That, well, that, that's common knowledge. That's common knowledge about Randy Orton. 
why don't, there could be a moment there. There could be a chance where we we could have. Um, I mean, I read a scenario. I read a possible scenario. I don't know if this was a comment or if this was in the edit or, or if this was in an editorial, but I read a I read a possible scenario where the authority will be so desperate that they'll actually try to take out one of John Cena's team members, and they will force them into a five on four situation where they could actually risk being disqualified because of the fact that they need five on the team in order to compete in the match. And or Randy Orton. That's all I can say about that. There's so many ways this can go. It's obvious about Team Cena going over, but there have been some scenario. There is a, there is a scenario where Team Authority actually can win this thing. To have the Cena the Cena team members fired only for Mr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon himself to rehire those fired Team Cena members. Tomorrow on the next the next night on Monday Night Raw, that's another scenario I came across. But in all honesty, the body of work is going to speak for itself. There's going to be some great near falls here. This is going to be the fight of the night without question, and it's going to be perhaps the new greatest traditional Survivor Series match of all time. I think this could be a five star classic. This is going to get a a crap load of time, guys. And at the end of the day, I do agree with Derek Ferreira. I think Team Cena go. I think Team Cena wins it. However, Derek, I disagree with who you have as survivors because I have John Cena himself as the sole survivor of this match. And I think it's going to come down to him and Seth Rollins in the end. And if Randy Orton ends up not being in this match, I think Randy Orton could end up showing up anyway. And making a possible run in, a possible surprise run in, like we saw with Kurt Angle in that match in the winner take all. Orton will cause some kind of a distraction long enough for Cena to possibly AA Seth Rollins and get the one, two, three and get Team Cena the victory. So I agree with Derek Ferreira's sentiments. The only, only difference is John Cena himself will be the sole survivor. Here's a guy who's only lost one time, one time. In Survivor Series history, that was in the 2012. But other than that, every other time John Cena has been involved, has competed in the Survivor Series, he's won. Team Angle, 2003. Team Eddie Guerrero, 2004. Title defense against Angle in 05. Team Cena in 06 against Team Big Show with Bobby Lashley, his partner, sole survivors. 07, he didn't compete. He was injured. 2008, wins the world title from Jericho. 09, successful title defense against DX. 2011, Team with Rock got the win against Miz and Truth. 2012, he lost. That's the only loss. The triple threat of Punk and Ryback. And then last year, he successfully defended against Alberto Del Rio, world title. They say Shawn Michaels, or maybe even The Undertaker, is Mr. WrestleMania. I'm going to be honest with you folks. John Cena, to me, is Mr. Survivor Series. One loss. John Cena, Soul Survivor. Michael Fletcher, how in the hell are you going to follow this, my friend? I don't envy you. You got to try. Go for it. You know what? There's really nothing else to say. It's on. Tomorrow night, it's all about survival. It's all about being the team to win. And yeah, I heard the same rumors. I heard the same theories, including the Sting making the appearance. I heard about Roman Reigns just briefly, but I didn't hear much about it. Orton, we all knew he was going to come back. I mean, it's almost a given that he was going to come back. There is one other scenario that I heard. There's another person that actually has been for, for missed. And that is Mick Foley's name has been thrown around. Now, why is Foley being thrown around? Well, they're saying that there's a possible rumor going around that Foley might be back with the WWE as an authority figure hired by Mr. McMahon to be the, once again, 
general manager of Monday Night Raw, and that he would actually bring back uh, the fire John Cena members if for some reason Cena's team does lose tomorrow night, which would be, you know, a breath of fresh air and whatnot and a whole nine yards. But the thing is this. This is a fight and a battle and a war. There's no turning back, guys. You know that. And what this is all about is not just about two teams going at it. It's legacy. It's honor. And it's tradition. Survivor Series has always been that Thanksgiving weekend tradition. When it started, you know, oddly enough, back at the Richfield Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio, back in 1987. Now, oddly enough, it was on Thanksgiving night when that happened. It's always been one of those events that you jack yourself up for. And, you know, a lot of people consider it, you know, out of the out of the top four pay-per-views, it's considered the fourth one. You know, it's not as prestigious or as, as famous as the Rumble, SummerSlam, or, or WrestleMania, obviously. Mania is the big kahuna. SummerSlam is easily probably the number two of the pay-per-views. Number three is definitely... The um is definitely Royal Rumble and the Ugly Duckling or the I I hate to I don't want to that sound too raw in about it but the the forgotten pay per view or the forgotten of the majors is Survivor Series. There's no doubt about it. And the thing is, is that for the last few years, Survivor Series hasn't really been that big of a or a successful pay per view. No doubt about it. Until now. Because it hasn't really been a fight that really has gotten our attention or made us say that we are we want to see this event. Unlike this night. Unlike this event. Unlike this fight. Because this one will have all of our eyes glued to the TV. It doesn't matter, you know, with the surprises. We still would have seen this. You know, to see possibly the authority be gone and be out forever is as sensitive enough. Now you add the fact that possibly Cena's crew could go down in flames. You think Cena's haters are going to be the Cena haters are going to be out in full force. They're going to be begging, hoping that Cena teams loses. You know? I think the ultimate kicker is if John Cena would have been included in that. Because if Cena would have lost, if Cena's team would have lost, why the hell not Cena get fired? Why not? You know, I could see Triple H do something like that. That, you know, Cena's team is gone. You know what, Cena? You're gone too. You're fired. And then, of course, McMahon will probably override that. But still, at the end of the day, it goes like this. It doesn't matter what we think, what we predict, what we see. Because tomorrow night... It's going to be right here. It's going to be right in our forefront. It's going to be right in our faces, and we're going to see it. And the intent, the anticipation is palpable. You could cut it with a knife right now. The electricity in St. Louis, Missouri, is a fevered pitch. You want to talk about jacked up? That's what we are. We're all jacked up for this. We're all excited we're all, we're ready. We're ready for Survivor Series. We're ready for that main event. And one thing is for sure, gentlemen, whoever comes out of that fight, and I truly believe that it will be Team Cena who will win it. And yes, I do believe it will be John Cena. But let's think about this. If Cena wins it, you know, the Cena haters will be all ho-hum. You know, it's Cena, Super Cena, rules the roost again. You know, the hell to the cockering hero. But what about if one of these others wins it? What if Ziggler wins it? What if Ryback wins it? What a shot in the arm 
it would be for one of these guys to win this fight. To be the one to say, I put the authority out. Are you talking, like Anthony Floyd would say, put the jackpack on the back of this guy. He is going to skyrocket to the moon if they win. I'll tell you one thing. It's going to be a fight to remember. I hope it's that five-star classic that you guys think it's going to be. But I think with the shenanigans and everything else, I'm sorry, I I can't go five stars. I can say four, four and a half, no doubts. And I can't put my finger on calling it the greatest Survivor Series match, elimination match of, of all time either. I think I'm in a wait and see. I'm in a holding pattern. But I will tell you this, Shelman. It will be a fight to remember. It will be a great match. It will be exciting. Shakespearean drama of the highest degree. And it's going to be a mafioso performance. You better, I hope you guys are ready. Get some rest. Rest very comfortably tonight, gentlemen. Because tomorrow night, around 10 p.m. Eastern, you better put your war paint on. And because you, 10 men, are not just going to be fighting for honor and glory. You're going to war. You're fighting for something that's even bigger than WWE. You're fighting for your careers. You're fighting for a legacy. And I'll tell you this, gentlemen. The winners of these fights, it's, they're building this like a WrestleMania moment. All you just got to do is this. Grasp it, reach for it, put your blood, your sweat, and your tears in that ring. Climb higher than you've ever gone, and come out swinging. No man left behind. Only one, or maybe multiple, will survive. The one thing's for sure. Tomorrow night, it's going to be about one thing. There's going to be an ending. Somebody's going to write that final chapter in that book and close it. Could that be Team Cena's last night in WWE? Or could it be the end of the authority? One thing is for sure. It will be a happening tomorrow night in St. Louis, Missouri. And it will be a battle to remember. There's nothing more to say. You wanted that? You wanted Shakespearean drama? You told me, Anthony, how could I follow it? I think I followed it pretty damn well. What do you say? I say once again... And I hope Derek Ferreira joins me in this. Oh, hell yeah, man. Damn yeah, right. Yes. That is what we wanted. Damn yeah, that, right. That, that right there would make the late great Gorilla Monsoon very proud, man. I know right now he's looking down on you and he's smiling at you right now, man. That was absolutely phenomenal. And I know good old JR, wherever he is, I mean, I know he's already grinning from ear to ear today after what a certain running back on his team did today in college football. Oh, my goodness, what a day. So, Michael Fletcher, once again, giving us the J-Lo Gooseys. That's all there is to say. The Gooseys are already up and down my back, and I know they're up and down Derek's as well. Damn shame Michael Bola couldn't be here to, to witness that. I mean, oh, my goodness, that was unbelievable. So, well, of course, tomorrow night, Survivor Series on the WWE Network, 8 Eastern. Of course, I mean, I don't know if we even need to, you know, get into our overall thoughts because we already know this is going to be a great event. So um, we're definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be a hell of an event. 
I think we're, I think we're all going to give it a passing grade. That's all there is to say about that. This thing is going to be at least maybe an eight out of ten. That's all I can say right there. So that's going to do it for this. Of course, uh, coming up in just a matter of moments, we're going to be uh, switching over to Derek Ferreira's channel, SLB two thousand eight hundred nine. We got strictly sports NFL Saturday coming up. So with that said, uh, for our special guest, the hardcore pipe bomb Derek Ferreira, for the cerebral viper Michael Fletcher. This is ridiculously over Anthony Florio. Thing you know the routine, everybody. Thumbs up. Talk to you later. Yeah, throw it up Fortune Four style. Have a great night, everybody. And of course, well, coming up, uh, our Fortune Four Saturday, our Fortune Four Super Saturday Night continues over on Derek's channel, SLB two thousand eight hundred nine, with Strictly Sports NFL Saturday. So until then, that's all I can say about that. So bye for now, my friends. God bless. Enjoy Survivor Series, and of course, me and Fletch tomorrow night. We'll have the preview. We'll have the recap along, along with Michael Bullock immediately following the pay-per-view. So, bye for now, my friends. God bless. Be good to each other. Strictly Sports NFL Saturday begins in just a matter of a moment. Bye for now, my As a matter of fact, I am setting that up right now. And oh, wait a moment. Uh, wait a moment. Okay. I, I, I got I, Michael Bullock. Michael Bullock just got in, so uh, Michael Bullock should be on his way in for uh, Strictly Sports NFL Saturday. So we'll just have to catch him up on uh, get some quick thoughts on uh, his Survivor Series thoughts. So. Yep. So, so Strictly Sports NFL Saturday begins in just a matter of moments, my friends. So by the now. way, uh, to some of our viewers out there, um, I will have my recap mon either Monday morning, Monday afternoon on the Survivor Series, um, on the pay-per-view, on the sports blog. I wouldn't rule this out yet, but there's a possible chance you'll get a live blog, um, something that I'm actually thinking about doing. Um, on the sports block, so I'll be updating you guys throughout the night on sports block. That's a possibility tomorrow, but um, check out my block Monday. And oh, by the way, strictly sports NFL Saturday will start right about now. So switch over to SLB 2008 09 to watch uh, NFL Saturday. For now, everyone.